I have a confession to make. I didn't know that Peugeot made any other vehicle aside from cars, but apparently in 1898, they made their first motorcycle. And today we get to test out their retro scooter, the Django 115. It's time to go Beyond the Ride. The bike is powered by a 150.6cc air-cooled four-stroke single overhead cam twin valve engine with electronic fuel injection that punches out 11.3 horsepower and 11.2 newton meters of torque. Stopping power is provided by disc up front and at the rear, but only the front has ABS. Keeping bumps at bay, you get telescopic forks and a unit swing arm. The size of the tires are the same front and back. They are size 12 and they are 120 by 70. And if you look at the rims the wheels are it's a pretty unique design it's all led lighting in the front rear indicators and even the drls which frame the peugeot logo now the front rack and the rear rack is actually an accessory that you can add later on but you have to be sure if you want to put these on because they're drilled right there on the fairing of the of the bike so once you put on the rack you don't go back now let's talk about the elephant in the room yes it does look like a Vespa, but I think that's actually a good thing because that silhouette is kind of the staple for classic looking scooters or as Peugeot likes to call it, Neo Retro. But this has some design cues that are a little bit different from the Italian brand. Now, I do absolutely love the design. I mean, I think it's sleek, classy, sophisticated. And Peugeot says they were inspired by the streets of Paris in the 1950s. But I have to ask Kako if that's true because he was there. The gauge cluster is a combination of analog and digital with no tachometer and does a little dance when you start up the bike. The digital section has fuel level, trip meter, odometer, ambient temperature, and time. It is a pretty long scooter, slightly longer than a Vespa. It's got a length of 1,925 millimeters and a wheelbase of 1,350 millimeters. All right, let's talk about the uh, storage space. You got this little hook right here that you can carry whatever you want down there. And then you have these two compartments. If you turn to the right, this opens. You can put, well, stuff in there. <laughs> and then you turn to the left, this one opens. I actually kind of like the way that, that opens. And this is where the, um, the fuel cap's at. Um, yeah, so not much storage space. You have to be careful though with the, with the, when you load fuel because sometimes that will leak. By the way, I forgot to say that there is a 12 volt socket over here to charge your gadgets. So underneath the seat, you have a decent amount of space, not huge, but it is enough for an open face helmet. Now these are the uh, foot pegs for the pillion, which tucks away quite nicely. It looks like it's integrated into the design of the of the scooter but i do really love the accent here right i mean it's that white and blue looks really good and i typically don't like chrome but i think this works really well with the colorway of the scooter the seat height is 770 millimeters quite pinoy friendly i am 5'6 with a 764 millimeter inseam and that is the situation. Now, it looks like I am tippy-toeing more than I should be on a seat height this low, but it's because the seat is kind of wide up here in the front. There is a lot of space here for a pillion, and it is quite comfortable. So if you do own the scooter, it would probably be nice to ride it with your special someone. Unfortunately for me, I'm going to test it out with Earl with his racing, racing helmet. And that's the situation. There is quite uh, enough space. So. Kung nag kayo ni Mrs., on the way home, there's enough space between the two of you. So the fuel tank capacity is 8.5 liters, and Earl did the computation on the unit that he has, and he got 34.5 kilometers per liter. So let's just do a sound test just for the heck of it. Sounds like a scooter. Now, 
Now the seat is nice and comfortable and I do like the position. It's pretty much standard for you know what you expect for most scooters out there. Um, for somebody my height, five foot six, the you know the the position is okay. For somebody who's taller, probably you, you know five ten, close to six feet tall, uh, you might feel a little cramped um, in the sitting here with your with your leg with your leg room. The dash is not so clear at times. I mean, the speedometer uh, has a slight glare to it uh, at certain angles, and that's probably because of the bubble lens on top of it. And the digital gauge is kind of big for what it displays, but that's just nitpicking a little bit on the design of the gauge. Let's be honest, you don't really look at that that much that often anyway. The switches are serviceable, um, you know, for the for where it is and it's in the price range, you'd expect something to feel a little bit more premium. But again, that's nitpicking a little bit. Um, it's totally fine, it's serviceable, but I'm just thinking that it, you could expect, you, you know, I wanted something a little bit more premium in terms of the, the switches. When you use the indicators of this bike, the signal light, <laughs> you do hear a beeping sound to remind you that it's still on. And of course, there's some people out there who always forget to turn off their indicators and their signal lights when they switch lanes or make a turn. And this, you know, feature, if you want to call it that, are made specifically for those people. I admit, sometimes I do forget, uh, but very rare. But there are people who are part of Team Moto Deal, namely Earl and Jack, who always, always forget to turn off their indicators. Now, a lot of people want to compare it to a Vespa. And sure, it has a classic vibe to it, but they're really different. The seat height of this is lower and the scooter is lower to the ground. It's you know low enough that sometimes if you're a little bit on the heavier side and you're going over a, a big speed bump, there's a chance that you're gonna scrape it. Now the Vespa sits a little taller and it's also a little bit, well, you know, you're, you're, you can tend to tip over on a, on a Vespa probably easier than on this scooter. Now the, the throttle is nice and smooth, but not super responsive. Um, yeah, it, it's fine, but you know, I, again, I'm comparing it to the Vespa because most people who are probably looking at this scooter are probably looking at a Vespa as well. And for example, you need to twist the throttle a little bit more compared to the S150, right? And you know, the S150, you only need to, you know, twist the throttle maybe about a quarter of a turn. Um, the Django takes about a full half turn to go full throttle, while the Vespa is a quarter. So that's not that, not that huge a difference. I guess it depends on your riding style, which you prefer more, something that's smoother but not as responsive or something that's, you know, ultra responsive that kind of gets a little bit jerky. And the ride quality is decent. Um, and you know, part of it is because of the conventional front forks. The Vespa uses a linkage system that helps the suspension absorb bumps better. Um, again, I, I think it's okay, but if you wanna really you know, look at both this and the Vespa and, and trying to decide which one you wanna go with, uh, just letting you guys know that it, this is not as a, it's not as, I guess smooth or, or uh, easy, steady ride as the Vespa is in terms of suspension. The engine of the Peugeot is is fine. Uh, you will do. You will notice a kind of chug while the scooter is idling, and you will also feel some minor vibrations. Um, but it's not too disturbing, right? I mean, it's it's something that you could probably get used to, and it's something that you. I, I don't think it's a big deal, but I just want to point it out. The brakes of this are absolutely fantastic, especially since it has a disc at the back, which you know, you know, the stopping power is something that you could, you know, you always could use good brakes no matter what kind of bike that you use. And this has exceptional ones. They work really, really well. And the transmission is smooth and not aggressively geared, which again, adds to the simplicity of riding this scooter, right? I mean, sure, it's, it's a twist and go, which is already simple enough, but with the smoothness of the transition, you know, the, the unaggressive gearing, it just makes it simpler. It makes it easier for, for, for all riders out there, whether you're advanced or beginner, 
it's just an easy, smooth, simple, chill ride. You can hit 100 kilometers per hour eventually if there's a long enough uh, open stretch, but it's not that fast a bike. It's not that fast a scooter. Downhill, you can probably hit about 110 kilometers per hour. Um, but the truth is, you know, on a scooter, you probably don't really want to go that fast anyway. It's, you know, scooters are really meant to get you from point A to point B, you know, nice, chill, simple ride, you know, twist and go, and something that's, you know, if you want to do spirited riding, probably go get something, even a sniper with this is something that's, you know, more spirited riding than this. But this is, a, you know, you have to remember, this is a classic retro-inspired scooter that isn't meant for high performance, right? This is something that's going to get you from point A to point B in style. It's very, very easy to filter the bike. You can ride it around the city, no problem whatsoever. It's, it's something different, right? It's not like all the other scooters out there um, in terms of its aesthetics. And I think that's really maybe the biggest draw to this, to this uh, Peugeot, that if you've rolled up to a coffee shop, you, chances are you'll be the only one using a Peugeot. And I guess in, in a way, that's kind of the draw to it. It's unique. It's a conversation piece. Uh, unlike, you know, just another Vespa out there or just another premium scooter. This is going to be something that stands out. And I think that's really the draw of the Django. Mm -hmm. So the verdict, well, it's a nice, chill, classic looking scooter, which I absolutely love. Now the price, the base model starts at 199,000 Philippine pesos, while this, the a little bit more special model, goes for 216,000 Philippine pesos. Now between the two, this looks so much more special compared to that one. So I would actually go for this, hands down. Now, there is something about the scooter, right? I mean, it, you don't see it every day, and I think that's part of the appeal. So if you want to stand out from the crowd, who ride around in classic looking scooters, this might be a pretty good choice. There is a certain je ne sais quoi about the Django. Now, I know what you're thinking. At that price, it's actually more affordable than a Vespa. However, it's not a Vespa. Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I guess that's up to you. For more information about these bikes and other MCs out there, log on to www.motodeal.com.ph. This has been Gene Rafino. Hope you guys enjoyed. Going to be on the ride.